accidentally discovered the house next door was occupied by something not human. In today's episode, we will be diving into the cult classic horror film Fright Night from 1985. Directed by Tom Holland, the story revolves around a teen's discovery that his new neighbor is a vampire and his attempts to stop the vampire's killing spree with the help of a renowned vampire slayer. This supernatural horror flick stars Chris Sarandon, William Ragsdale, Roddy McDowell, and Amanda Brearse. Fright Night has since become a beloved classic in the vampire film genre. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more thrilling content. Hey folks, man, this is Monk, and we are back with another episode of Classes of Cinematics. And we're joining us all as my co host. We got Bobby Blockbuster. Yo, yo, yo. And today we're going to be talking about Fright Night from 1985, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah <laughs> this is a classic yeah, yeah. vampire film, man. This is one of the best, man, I think, man, especially considering for the time that it was released, man. They did some really cool stuff in this with playing around with, you know, vampire lore and mythology in a way. And I think it's cool, man. I think I mean, it turned out really well. I'm with you 100%. This one, it actually, it broke the mold from the traditional vampire story. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, it gives us a, a fast-paced vampire story that's kind of intertwined with Boy Who Cried Wolf. Mm -hmm. all wrapped in this like <laughs> chaos in suburbia kind of feel which gives it a slight sense of realism in this unrealistic story that we're watching you know mm -hmm. what i mean and i mean I, I like i like that you know of course jerry dandridge as the vampire is the main ingredient mm -hmm. but the focal point is charlie brewster the kid next door who's like seeing all these things happen and how he's really processing it digesting it but overall trying to handle it yeah. And no one believes him. <laughs> like, I mean, you look at it, he's a 17 year old high school kid running around telling everybody his neighbor is the vampire that's killing everybody that they're seeing is dead on the news. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And everyone's just looking at him like he batshit crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love that. I love that element of it, man. How that that's put together, man. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, just the, the makeup of this thing, man. So, so what's something that stands out to you about this thing, man? I mean, you know, I'm gonna just keep, keep talking about this story. I mean, really, it is one of the more entertaining vampire stories that mm -hmm. I have ever seen. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, like I said, because it separates itself from your tra traditional style, like what we got from Nosferatu or uh, even the Universal Dracula and everything. A lot of times in those films, the the people go to the vampire. They seek him out. Yeah. Where it seems like this one, the <laughs> vampire came to to Charlie, which that was just unheard of, unseen at at, at that time. But then also. I like that, you know, this film about 20 minutes in, we're offered something that I've never seen before where the vampire gives the victim a choice. <laughs> he runs up on him and says, yo, you have, I am tired of your shit. You're, you're, you're telling your friends, your mom, your, your, the cops about me. Mm -hmm. One, one crack at, one crack at the dog, one more, one, one shot I'm going to give you. You forget about me and I'm going to forget about you. And it's just interesting because like, He's just peeking out the window, man. Just you know what I'm yes. saying. He's he's he's, he's and he's he sees something. Neighbor. Yeah, which is crazy to me. He's already a, a dick for that, you know what I'm saying. But well, sometimes, they, I mean, he, he, sometimes he, when you go looking, you find things. He's chick watching. <laughs> yeah, he's perving it. He's perving it, bitch. He's perving it with his girl. With his girl <laughs> in the right there. I know. <laughs> like, dude, what's wrong with you? It's Charlie, really, Charlie's a scumbag, and scumbag. he sees some suspicious behavior. But but what I like about this thing, like 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 you said, that wolf cry aspect. It's like the one character knows something. That none of the other characters knows, and the 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 very part that he's watching validates it too. I yes. love that part because he's like like you said when he shows up, he's like, bro, you poking around, you making my spot hot, and, yes. and it's cool seeing that play out because I think that leads to the part of the story where I think this thing is elevated, and that's the interaction we get from this vampire. We we haven't seen this in 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 this way up until this point. I don't think. I mean, you had. Yeah. You can have it kind of hinted at with this TV series, Dark Shadows, where they have yes. a lot of time to play out the episodes. But seeing this vampire interact with, with real people in real yeah. time and, and, and you see the ways that he's going by manipulating people to, to disguise his what he is. Yes. And also coexist in his world in his world. But at the same time, he's kind of like, cool, man. He's subdued and he's more standoffish. Like he he is he is the essence of power. He knows that. He is the cat toying with the mm -hmm. mouse in, in, in every aspect of this film with anyone he interacts with. <laughs> but it's like, like even at the part where, where he runs up in Charlie's room, like he's about to kill Charlie. He's like, yeah, you better stop screaming or I'm gonna have to kill your mom too. <laughs> it's like he almost, he's like, 
And I, I feel like that was really cool. It was a cool approach because it's showing that he has multiple opportunities to just take Charlie out at will, but he doesn't. It's almost like, it's like he's trying to show the audience that he is still part human. He does mm -hmm. have uh, some form of a moral compass. Well, a little bit too, but also I think also too, he's not trying to just have to move immediately. Like I, 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 get, just I, moved in. I get the sleepwalkers um, vibe from this. Like, yes. like, like he's doing this in different towns and different worlds yes. and he does it until he gets too hot and then he has to move on to the next town. But I, I, and, I, and, and, I think, never... and I don't think he wants to have to move immediately. He he's just not here. He's never got hot in the first. <laughs> yeah, week. yeah. I mean, but Charlie's watching him when, when he's putting, bringing the yeah. coffin in. So uh -huh. I mean, like, shit, that was that day one. But mm -hmm. you know, like I said, this 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 thing with this choice, it always stood out to me when he's like, "Man, you forget about me, forget about you." Mm -hmm. What would you do in that situation? Man, it's rough because then what happens when you start noticing your your neighbors disappear? And then I'm already freaked out. You done came to me and gave me a choice. I know what you are. I know who you are. That's going to freak me. Like, Ma, can we move? Why you do we got to live here? That's, I don't like the school no more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm getting bullied. I'm getting bullied. You know, something. But, you know, and I'm, I'm with you 100% because I was, I was Yo, thinking about this. And I was like, you know, like, if for me to agree to that, there would have to be some kind of set rules. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, you can't kill my friends, my family, my loved ones. But then on the flip side, how do you... How do you make rules with a lion? You don't tell a lion how to pick its victims in the jungle. Yeah. You can't do that. You, you know, so, and also so, the rules could change. Who knows? In any minute, he could just he like, could flip mean, on a whim. At, at the end of the day, he might just decide you took you know too much because you can't put the binoculars down. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You keep window watching. You yeah. keep being nosy. So you're gonna start seeing. Man, I ain't even looking at the house. Answer. If he visited me Hell like no. that, I ain't no I'm moving to the basement. I was like, man, I don't want to see shit. I want to see nothing next door. I'm gonna come and go from the back door. I don't even want them to exactly. see me. Exactly. Like, Mom, the tell him I moved out. I went to college a year early. You know what I'm saying? I'm homeschooling now, some shit, man. Yeah, but, man. But and, and that's that's the cool thing. So we get all of this like this tension building and this this character building, and 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 the story building, and then we also get like his his. The friend element, which I really thought was really cool. I think a Amy is a solid, like, ride that or is, die. That's like, his girlfriend, girlfriend. though. Yeah. That's his girlfriend. But she also... I ain't like his friend, though. You know, He's a dick. Well, that's the thing. They're, they're <laughs> addicted to him. They're addicted to evil. Like, evil is the probably... Like, he is the, 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 the misunderstood misfit in the mm -hmm. school. Everybody, they, they, they pick on him. They make fun of him. He's loud. He's obnoxious. And it seems like... He, uh, Charlie and Amy are his only friends, but they yeah. even mess with him mm -hmm. because of his, his, his weirdness. <laughs> I mean, but, uh, but he is just what he is. Yeah, that that what was saying? a weird looking person, though. Yeah, I mean, he, he is a weird dude. He is, he is a weird dude. But you know what? I'm I, trying to think about seeing him in anything after this. Dude, it, it tripped me out because the only other role I ever saw him in, it came out like I think a year or two after this was Robert England's 976 Evil, mm. which also really tripped me out as a little dude because his name was Evil in this and then he's <laughs> in a film called 976 Evil. Yeah. So I thought it was an extension of that character, but it's two mm -hmm. completely different things. But, you know, and I, I thought for like for, for him to have such a small role, he's such a significant. He's definitely character. memorable, you know, especially Absolutely. like especially toward the end when oh, things develop. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but um, yeah. So so also, you know, just, just being on the story, get this out the way. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, he like no one believes him, man. His mom is even falling for this yes. guy and everything. And so eventually he seeks out the help of a, a vampire hunter who, who i think is a cool um interesting aspect to bring into this and that brings a lot of stuff too it brings a lot of fun in the fact that that, that that we get the vampire lore expansion but we also get um an examination of the the field of vampire hunting and then it's kind of spoofing that a little bit you're you're, you're they're playing around with this stuff and it's just really cool man well, and, like i love the the aspects I, of uh, and i love i love that, that they, the they kind of like they they take it real light like like Peter Vincent is everything that a vampire hunter that you don't want in one. I mean, he's a fool. He's scared to death. Even the first time you see him, like I noticed <laughs> that on this rewatch when he tried at the very beginning, when he tries to kill the vampire chick, he's holding the stake backwards, mm -hmm. point towards him. He's like, oh, I'm a stake. You, you know, <laughs> he, 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 he's like, he's like, can't get right. You know what I mean? But, but but it's also a thing where he's doing it for TV and for entertainment. And, and I'm not even sure that he believes it. In no. himself until when things start really and when the, and, when he's like oh my god we got a real one but that's the thing like, <laughs> you know? like at first like he he takes charlie like he's like man you're crazy just like everybody else but once he sees that it mm -hmm. is real when he looks at because they pretty much you know uh amy and Ed I love that scene convince too, 
Dandridge to let Vincent come over and they they prank Charlie into thinking like that he's not a vampire, but he already knows. Yeah. And we know that he knows as an audience. So we're like, oh, y'all, y'all fucking up. But he opens up that little cigarette case with the mirror. He don't see the reflection and he drops it. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we just completely downshift. Now there's there's no more tension building. The, 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 the groundwork of the story has been laid and now it just goes full on horror. It, those are really great scenes. That, that scene particularly because it's like outside of the mirror, everything else is seems like to be bullshit or yes. have aspects of it that we haven't considered. Like when he drinks the holy water, I'm like, yo, or even even earlier, honestly, when he gave him the choice with the um the cross and, and, and it's like, you got to have faith. Yeah, and it's faith. like there, there's extra rules to this stuff. You yes. can't just be some heathen and, and, and then in your darkest hour, you want to like, be oh, a by the way, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> and, and it's cool you know, and it's cool because uh, we'll get into that a little bit when we get to the character, but but it's cool how it's played up, you know, like you know by the you know by our main vampire here, man. It's and crazy, it's, and it's funny. Like speaking of the rules, I love how pretty much the, the the rule book that they're reading out of is whatever happened in the movies. Let's apply that in this yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's funny. <laughs> like, the, the funniest part to me is when when he goes to seek the help of Evil Ed, because he's like, man, you know about this stuff. And he's like, yeah, you know, take the cross, wear a garlic necklace. He's like, but most importantly, Brewster, <laughs> don't invite him into your house. Mm -hmm. And then when he goes home, his damn mom invited him over they for drinks. They were already in there, bro. And, he's, and my man is like, he's so like, and this is where like, you know, this is just great, you know, character work on Sheridan's part. Because he's like, the, to have the word for all to like imply all this stuff, he's like, yeah. Uh, now, you know, what would you think? I was not going to come over without being invited. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to come over whenever I want. Mm -hmm. Of course, with your mom's permission. <laughs> I'll be seeing you soon. So, yeah, real so, soon. So, so, you know, so, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so, you know? so, I mean, this thing culminates into a finale and, and you know, it's, it's, it's whatever, whatever. But, but I think now, like, it's hard to talk about this without talking about the characters. Yes. So I think that's what stands out. And the main one that, that really impressed me was um, Jerry Dandridge, played yeah. by Chris Sarandon, who is our vampire. Yeah. And we're getting this vampire in a way that that's rarely seen like 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 he he epitomizes um embodies um you know what we expect from a vampire charming you know mysterious dark but but to see it play out in this way like like i think chris ran and leaned into this role and, and honestly it's not talked about enough when the when the when the list come out of um best movie vampires he should be damn near near the top dude like, yes. like he's one of the best like like the charm the charisma the snark the 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 like the evil it, it's but so the good fear like mm -hmm. that, in that that confidence like so he good, walks around dude. like he knows <laughs> yeah. he got some on you like man try me if you want mm -hmm. to and that's what i'm saying like for him his character what he portrays on screen it was groundbreaking equally as the, the first time we ever saw Nosferatu mm -hmm. or Universal Dracula. Like what, what he brought to the table was unseen up until yeah. this point. Uh, I and feel like, who was, who was our main guy in uh, um, Lost Boys? I feel like that guy was, that was watched this it to, was dated. to get it. Yeah, but, but I feel like he was, he was channeling his vampire a little bit from 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 Jerry's with, vampire, with, you know, absolutely, with, with putting more of a, a relatability towards yeah. you know teenage life, you know, putting putting some youth into it where where Sheridan or uh, Sarandon, I'm always calling Chris Sheridan for some <laughs> uh, Jerry Dandridge, he like you can tell like he's one of these long in the tooth vampires he's been around for years they don't establish how long but you can tell that he's been in the world oh no no i'm talking about not not david but david's boss remember oh the video oh <laughs> yeah. the video store owner no yeah. no the um that was the, he was the video store owner oh yeah the one the one, the one who came to the house yeah, yeah 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 it's kind of like yeah. that like and i feel like but this see, film kind of spawned yeah that characterization a little bit because it kind of flows in the same way he yeah. invited her in and he gets cool with the mom yeah. and, you know like, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, man. definitely. But yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Just he's his uh, his performance was was definitely uh, bar none one of one of the best vampire uh, vampires we ever seen on screen. But I also, you know, on the flip side of that, you know, you can't have you know heads without the tails. Where with, with um, what's my man's name? Uh, William Ragsdale is Charlie. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, he, great. Like he really just, I mean, this he's so convincing. Dude, like like this 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 paranoia that he runs around with and, and this like this where for all to know what's going on. I mean, and there are multiple times when he really looks scared. Mm -hmm. Like he he embodies his role. Like in you know, what he does is he brings a level of relatability, not that those of us that are watching the film have ever been through this. Oh yeah, my neighbor my neighbor's a vampire <laughs> too, so I feel you, dog. No, it's it's just that that what would I do fact. Mm -hmm. You can't watch this without happening to think some at some point. What would I do if that was me? How would I handle this? 
Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's a testament to what he brings to the screen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then how he how he how he bags his role. Yeah, it's crazy too, because like rewatching this, I forgot um Amanda Bierce was in this man. Um hey, as, as Amy. Darcy. Yeah, Marcy <laughs> Darcy. It's crazy because I watched it. I was like, man, she was kind of a hottie, man. And yeah. then you go to look at Married with Children, how they turn her into this frumpy annoying you know i was like damn yo they they, they kind of messed up like that like, yeah. that like as popular as that show was i wonder if switching her character up and they try to act like she wasn't she was mid you know what i'm saying when yeah. you watch that show yeah. it's just annoying it's crazy but also like like i think this was probably came out two years before uh married with children but to see like like i, I think this one it's, it's okay she gets she gets to eat a little bit but then to see the the range you know in, in that show and like the the transition yeah. is crazy but 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 it's interesting because he gravitates toward her of uh, Jerry because she looks like someone from the from, from, from yeah, I mean, could have been a hundred years ago, a yeah. woman he was in, infatuated with. So that adds a different dynamic. I think he probably would have left um uh Charlie alone if there wasn't that connection. Probably he would Charlie, just, he would've just yeah. killed Charlie, but yeah. he wouldn't have brought in the crew. Like he he, mm -hmm. he starts he starts he could have he could have ignored more to get yeah. like he yeah. wants to kill Charlie, mm -hmm. but he wants Amy for yeah. himself. Yeah, he would he probably would have ignored them and just kept doing his thing as long as Charlie kept up yeah, his end of the deal. Under the radar. You know, but 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 yeah. having her in that brought it into a different level. And what's really cool is like <laughs> she just she really just brings in the the innocence mm -hmm. of it. You know what I'm saying? Because like she's just She's so unaware and like she's just really just driven by her feelings for Charlie. Like mm -hmm. she she overlooks the fact that he might be crazy. She overlooks the fact that, you know, he instead of focusing on her and when they're in the bedroom, he's binocular and out the window. You know, there's a <laughs> lot of shit she yeah. looks past, you know, because she cares for him, really cares for him. Mm -hmm. And 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 you know, it's crazy because he like he doesn't really acknowledge it. He knows it's there, but doesn't mm -hmm. acknowledge it and then he accidentally he doesn't even really yeah, feel I, I ain't looking like, out the window of my girlfriend in he, the bed talking about come come do me yeah i'm ready <laughs> like, i'm ready charlie like, what no man you gotta see what they bringing in the basement <laughs> put that on pause no nah, it don't make no sense so but, but like that confrontation scene like is cool is cool to me because as soon as he sees her it's like bang and then yeah. you're like what the like, and, like it, and it, it, instantly it, it he brings the charm. Switch. Yeah, yeah he's like, like yeah, you know, kissing on her hand is, and all oh, this man, stuff. It's crazy, man. But then, it's like, crazy. it's good. It's good stuff. Man. Yes, and then also, you know, you get like this, this, this cement of our two main characters in Roddy McDowell. He like he he brings the trifecta full circle mm -hmm. with with his character as Mr. Vincent. I mean, he's like this. Like I said, he's just this gumpy ass, like B rate <laughs> actor uh, who Yo. obviously didn't level up. I mean, he was so bad as a character actor, as this vampire hunter, that they, they no longer make his movies, but they let him host a show to introduce <laughs> his shitty movies. In you the know what? The so he's like, he's like the uh, a, a shitty version of like El Viver. Or, or like, remember, like remember, Godfrey remember, remember, yeah, like, yeah. remember, and if you, if you're from the uh, DMV era, you might remember Captain 20. Yeah. He used to be on <laughs> doing the yeah. intros for the movies. Yeah, yeah. So he's one of these type of dudes, except his angle is, is this Vincent Price kind of S knockoff <laughs> just, and vampire killer. Just, I mean, his name is kind of a homage to a Vincent play Price. off that, yes. But, but, but yes. I do like him, man. He, he's, he brings a, a cool dynamic to him because, because, um, once he sees that, that mirror, he's all in. You know, and, and the thing but is, and the, but, but it's it's scared because he don't really know nothing. Everything yes. he's doing, and he and that 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 uh, that Charlie comes to him about is just shit that he saw in the movie. Shit that he saw, <laughs> did yes, yes. And then it's like it's crazy because then once once he um once he uh, sees uh, Dandridge the the whole mirror situation, then next thing you know, he gets a knock at the door. It's evil, like oh, there's vampires out here. Let me in. And evil turns flat out vampire on him, and, mm -hmm. and that's when you know. Lucky for him that he was wearing his his Mr. Vincent robe that with the handy cross pocket and had the cross on him, because then that's when he he sizzles evil's head, <laughs> puts the X in his forehead and everything. X marks the spot. X marks the spot. <laughs> and, uh, and then and then by that point, like he's wow. just. I mean, he, he's shitting bricks because, like, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we get at the same point. This is where you know, pretty much. Uh, Dandridge sends Evil to go take care of Vincent because he's light work mm -hmm. and he's like, yo, I'm getting Charlie and I'm taking Amy. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, when they all get back together, Charlie goes and he, he seeks out Mr. Vincent. He's like, yo, um, they got Amy. And he now now Dandridge doesn't just want to kill me. He said, mm -hmm. you go get Mr. Vincent too. <laughs> I want both y'all now. And I, I, what I like too though, um uh, yeah, yeah, he he um you know, he gets busy, helps him get uh militant, you know what I'm saying, with the weaponry. But also when we first meet him, 
He's just down bad. Like they're he walking around fired. his house, and, and he's got he's got an eviction notice. And the craziest thing to me when you look at the notice, it's got the most evil, angriest font ever. Oh, like yeah. they don't they don't really look like that, bro. No, the government yeah. documents. Don't, it's a big red stamp. Look like it's not. That. It looks like it looks like a uh, like letterhead from Transylvania. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> like bro, not only are you gonna get evicted, you gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, and that's and that's the thing is. This episode is brought to you by Classic Cinematics Merchandise. Now y'all know just as well as I do how much an unwanted phone call can mess up your day. But with this Classic Cinematics cell phone case, I might not be able to stop those douchebags from calling, but damn if I don't look cool when I talk to them. Don't be afraid to be cool. Get yours today by clicking the link below. Yeah. You know, crazy, the cool thing man. about all that is like at some point <laughs> he does, he finds his strength in the fact that Charlie still believes in him. He's like, man, you're the great vampire killer. Mm -hmm. He's almost like, he's like Mickey rooting Rocky on to go fight Creed. He's like, come on, you're the great vampire killer. Let's do this. I need your help. You know, they gonna kill me, except, man. Except, except this, this Rocky ain't never fought nobody. He ain't never fought nobody. <laughs> man, he ain't even never been in the ring. He ain't, he ain't even ref a fight before. That's the thing. He's just, yeah, man. It's, it's so crazy. wild. This is interesting, man. But then, you know, like I said, I also, you know. As, as odd as it sounds with all these great characters, I I I have a personal just love for for Evil Ed. I think that his character dynamic is just. He's, I like when he goes for evil. Like like out, in yes. the beginning he's annoying, but but then when he goes vampire mode, it makes sense. It it it, it, it picks up. That's why you know, I'm already with and him. I'm, I'm I'm glad that you bring that up because like the reason why he's my favorite character is because of his annoyingness as a human and and just his awkwardness as a human, but how it turns into just frightening um mm -hmm. fear driven like just i mean i i would he makes, rather he makes a cool vampire i would rather be dandridge at dandridge after me than than evil ed <laughs> evil ed's a loose cannon dog yeah, you don't know what yeah. you're gonna he, get with him evil ed's a little repressed so so you might get some extra i mean on top of your death it's dog, gonna be like yes yeah, <laughs> and then i mean the way he looks dog i mean it's already bad enough once he gets the the x branded in him but dude his teeth they protrude out his mouth like a bulldog. He's got this weirdo like like lips going. The teeth were hard in this. Like they they, were this, this was. Hard. I, I definitely remember watching this. This was HBO, and leading up to they probably did a month before this movie premiered on HBO of trailers and and, yes. and and HBO was a trip back then. Like they would come on and it'd be rated R. This was rated R by the most picture so This feature would only be shown at night. And, yeah, <laughs> so, and yeah. I watched this, you know, with my family, and, and I, there were some parts that freaked me out, but I think I did enjoy it, you know, as a, even 84, what, what, 80, let's say 85, uh, no, 85, 80, so maybe 86 it comes to HBO mm -hmm. or 87. Yeah. So think, I'm yeah. probably like nine, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so it, wasn't, it wasn't that bad of a watch compared to some other stuff that I've seen, and it was fun you know, by then I'm a little older. I'm picking up on nuance of film and in these situations, especially that scene. You know, the confrontation scene. I'm picking like, yeah. I'm like, yo, this is cool. He's, he's hiding, dipping and diving. But, but it was a fun ride, man. It's, it's scary. It has horror tropes. There's gore and all that. But I think this one elevates. It's like a fun film. It's not. It it's is. not a film really that's trying to scare you necessarily. You know, even though some of the imagery can be um shocking. Absolutely. But this is a this is about as fun as it gets, man. Like, like, right, stuff like, like this. So, you like know? if you put this next to Nightmare on Elm Street, mm -hmm. now Freddy Krueger is pretty much in essence doing the same thing that Dandridge is doing in a different light, but he's he's terrifying. Especially his first Freddy, yeah. He's yeah. telling jokes while he's <laughs> killing you in the worst mm -hmm. way humanly possible. Whereas <laughs> there, there there are jokes being told while Dandridge yeah. is on the hunt. It's, it, and it's the outside interference is telling the jokes, you know, but mm -hmm. that's, and that's, that, that's what kind of separates this film. It makes this film a little more lighthearted, easier to digest, especially if you're young. I was young as fuck when I saw this too. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, when it comes to the imagery, the like I said, I would prefer to see Dandridge. Dandridge was a nicer vampire. Mm -hmm. When Evil Ed, when he when he jumps out the bed with the raggedy hand, uh, <laughs> damn wig on, like it was almost like a play off of Red Riding Hood, yeah, yeah. dog. Like he's like, oh, dinner, no, I'm not any rips. And stuff. I mean, dude, he looks like infected. Mm -hmm. Like he doesn't look like like Dandridge when he turns full on vampire. He looks scary as you know a vampire should, but Evil looks like. Like he's almost at a point in, in his vampirism where he can't even turn back to human now. Like he's, oh, just, yeah, he's, he's getting he's worse he's, he's as a vampire. I mean, the, the the X is getting bigger. He's foaming at the mouth. His teeth 
all out all over the every which away you know yeah. and yeah i guess that that's probably to speak to the um the effects work in this man because yes. like they did a good job of showing me a lot of stuff that i hadn't seen before um you know what i'm saying with this especially you know you know you get evil at but but then just like i think what's dope about it is we get all aspects of vampirism the, the shape shifting the the morphing yes. the, then then you know of course the blood sucking and the seduction but then we get visually we get to see certain things like like um they all look um, different bro evil lads transformation from the wolf that was amazing was dude amazing. Like, like i just it was, it was on as i'm re-watching this thing earlier and i'm like yo i forgot about this scene and like yes. he, all of a sudden there's this big ass uh, grayish white wolf appears in the house and he's coming after charlie and um and he gets stabbed charlie stabs him but yeah. then you see this wolf like there's an overhead shot of the like, and, like oh, and it's not yeah. you know, this is pre CG so you so you got to build yes. this thing, yes. build this model this thing and, and dress it up and, and make it move some kind of way and it yes. still look convincing. And then you get the the uh, the, the the pieces that, that kind of lift off of uh, American Werewolf tra right. is transformation, but transforming back from wolf yeah. to human and, oh, and man. I mean it's still it's pain driven. I mean he's he's almost in essence like it's he's like reaching out. For Mr. Vincent to help him, but he's still trying to get him. Like he's like, if I get my hands on you, I'm gonna take you out too. <laughs> you like you know? to see people in pain. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's no, <laughs> no, I don't. It just it, it, it stands out. It stands out. You know, it, like I said, it, it, it taps into the emotional compass, dog. Like I'm just like, damn, they look like they hurt. Me. You know, and it's like, damn, that sucks. That I mean, sucks. Right, he was feeling that oh, big that ass twelve inch steak that, that, yeah, that, 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 co <laughs> that coffee table uh, leg. Yeah. But it's dope because, like I said, we, and then later on, the, the bat transformation with Dude, um, that's the ugliest bat ever in life. Yeah. Ugliest bat ever in life. I mean, but, it was but huge, big as a damn flat screen. It's huge. But bat. to include that in it, because, see, a lot of people, they don't go back and watch that. I know a lot of us know about the old Universal Dragon, but watch that movie, man. It's not even that long. Yeah. But rewatch it and see some of the aspects of Vampire Lord that are in that and yeah. to see them takes a lot of that and put it in this movie that's that's why i like vampire brooklyn so and much there's so much from that original dracula also, that's in that film not just not just dandruff turning into the bat but mm -hmm. also the mist element. yeah like that's he, part he of turns it turns into the mist and then Man. even like when when mr vincent's leaving <laughs> charlie's house after he kills evil ed mm -hmm. like all the mist that's dumping out of the house and Dude, stuff, it's, it's, it's there. heavy and like 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 i love that like there, there was a game back in the day i can't remember Legacy of Kane, bro. Yes. Back in PlayStation One, yes. and you could turn, you could do the mist shit, you could do the bat shit. And I think you could do a wolf and all kind of other yeah. vampire powers, man. Like I a mean, lot they, of times, they they a lot of times they just give us the blood sucking and, and yeah. some of this and stuff. But but you gotta give it all. You gotta speaking get, of the, whole, the lore, dog. Yeah, like, you, you gotta know, give it it all. all. <laughs> Chris uh, Chris Sarandon, he also he he dove into the lore on a personal level, and they said that the reason why he's walking around eating apples all the time is because mm -hmm. he determined that his vampire had a lot of fruit bat DNA. <laughs> wow. Like, these are the little things that you wouldn't, wow. you wouldn't really fruit think of. Yeah, that's yeah, why he's always eating crazy. apples and shit. This you know? is wow. and, and another thing too, um, you find out, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Who would have thunk that? Who th I can't make this shit up, wow. I'm not that clever. But yeah, it was, uh, it was Richard Edland and his team um, who who was in charge of the effects and everything. And a year prior, they did mm. Ghostbusters. Mm. And, you know, it, mm. Ghostbusters was a more it makes high sense, bro. Film. Yeah. It does make sense. And for me, what made it make sense most is what we see in Amy. When you see her with mm -hmm. that big, that smile for a mile, yeah. she reminds me of the the librarian that transforms in the beginning. Like, mm -hmm. Especially because Amy is the face on the cover art, the smoke above the house. It's Amy's face in that. Oh, smoke. I thought that was, um, what's the name? I thought that was um, Evil. evil? No, no, it's reason. Amy's face, that big ah, smile okay, and everything. Okay. So it really... And I thought that that was cool too because you know in other vampire films you know the the, the especially the female oh, vampires I see, I see. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. they look you know they still have a a level of like um, sex appeal to mm -hmm. them and she did too yeah, until yeah. she got that big ass smile yeah, until on the her smile face. came and, yeah, you, and you. A, a, another <laughs> another cool thing about that is <laughs> is Ragsdale's reaction when she first turns around and he's like. Ugh. It, that was a natural reaction because they said they never let him see mm. the actress in that makeup. Like when she first turns out, that was his first time seeing yeah, what she looked like. Because there are some shots where she's kind of laying on the ground, but purposely like yeah. hiding her face. And so, and so sort of that like, like that that reaction that you know startled like that was his first time seeing her dog. Mm -hmm. Like which 
that would have kind of freaked me out too, man. Yeah, like, man. She, she doesn't look friendly, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah. but yeah, man. I mean, the, these 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 effects. I mean, this is just this is why I love films from this era. The the, the practical effect age. It's just the amount of inventiveness and creativity and originality that is brought to the forefront. Not taking a jab at CG. CGs are the way of the world now, and they serve their purpose well. Oh, but man. with this, this is. I mean, this this has more hands involved. You have to just get more creative. You have to make things that are this look like other things in so many different ways and all just the artwork that's involved. And it's, it's you know, all those hands on. I mean, mm -hmm. even like through, you know, the patience of the actors and actresses when they're getting all this makeup applied, like they said, uh, Sarandon, uh, Jerry Dandridge, apparently he had like theatrical background. So he was, he was well versed in, uh, in the makeup application process. Mm -hmm. So while they were putting on his face paint, my man was doing his finger extensions. Like he was helping them mm -hmm. out because he didn't want to sit there for so long. I feel you. That's, you that see what I'm saying? That, yeah, that, like, that, that's but, definitely But it's dope. just, it's so much more hands on and it gives it a more realistic feel on screen for so, me. I got you know a question. I mean? um, what do you think about the, um, the 2011 version? Going to be 100 honest. Mm -hmm. I watched maybe the first 10 minutes and decided I didn't want to watch it. What? I love the original so much. I liked it, dude. I thought it was a cool movie. Like, here's my thing about remakes. I don't think these remakes are trying to replace the original. They're examining, but I thought that was a really good uh, film because, for one, Colin Farrell's a dope ass actor. So, so to see his take on Jerry, I thought that was really dope. And even they did some different stuff with um, Tony Collette as the mom. They gave her a more prominent role. So that and was kind of interesting. Is the one who plays Charlie, right? Um, Will McLovin I can't remember, Superbad. dude. I, I can't remember, McLovin, dude. dude. I can't remember that, man. Like, I haven't seen it in so long. Um, let me see. Um, Fright Night. Uh, what was that? 2011? Yeah, it had to be. I mean, but see, this is just, this is one of my favorite. This is Lost Boy's two favorite vampire yeah, ever. I, I just, I, I didn't want to nah, No, he it. wasn't. He wasn't. Charlie yeah. Brewster was Antoine oh, Yelchin. Oh, McLovin was that. And, um, yeah, so, so, so ah. Antoine Yelchin played um, Charlie, which is kind of sad because I, I think he's dead, dude. He had oh. a really messed up accident in his garage. I think of his, I think he parked his car in his garage and didn't set the parking brake. So he basically got pinned against the wall by his own um, SUV and, and, and oh, died, you know, damn, and he, I, he played, I think he played Chekhov in the, the Star Trek reboot, but, but I think it's an interesting film, man. It's, it's not like I think this is better or anything, but I, but I did enjoy, you know, for what we got in that film. I would, I would challenge I'll you to, to, to watch the whole thing because I think it it's out. just fun to see, cause especially Colin Farrell gets really crazy okay. in this thing is Jerry, man. Like, like it's a, it's a different manifestation of that character. But but um but I had a good time with it, man. And I think this fright I haven't seen Fright Night Two, the back in the day, that the sequel one is to this really one. Good. I didn't see that. Um so I you might know, I might go into track what's, that. Down. What's cool about that one is it, it reprises the roles of Charlie and Mr. Vincent. Mm, you know. Mm. But it's funny because I was looking into this a little more and in twenty twenty, Tom Holland confirmed the fact that he is going to make a direct sequel. To uh, to this fright night, bringing mm. back all original cast that's <laughs> that still be crazy, with us. Dude. Um, as far as if if the, the remakes never happened, the original Fright Night Two never happened. Mm -hmm. It's going to be called Fright Night Resurrection, where pretty much you notice how um, Evil Ed's the only person who doesn't disintegrate. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Whereas Billy and uh, Jerry Dandridge, they both disintegrate. Uh, Amy uh, obviously Amy turns back, but they say that. Uh, Charlie ends up moving back into his mom's house as a single parent with two kids and evil Ed is squatting in Dandridge's house trying to resurrect Dandridge and Billy. So, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, hey man, that's that's a pretty good concept too. Oh, and while, while just speaking of that, I almost uh, completely missed the, uh, missed the mark to talk about when we uh, bring it back to the cast. I like Billy Cole too, the guy who um, was the caretaker for Dandridge. Mm -hmm. I thought that he... He did a really good job as that 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 caretaker role like you know he had those lifeless eyes and everything and pretty much he's the only one of of this group of vampires that was something different like mm -hmm. i was kind of looking into you know what possibly he could be and there um i i came up with the fact that he might be something called a golem which is pretty much just like it's something that's created it's not my man smeagol from um it's not smeagol like because see, <laughs> <laughs> what a golem is it's 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 pretty like, much it's, like a, a... it's a life source that's created by something that's lifeless like mm -hmm. dust or sand or something uh via a ritual and if you watch how billy dies like he, he does have immortality but he has no other vampire powers once he gets hit with the stake mm -hmm. he melts and then and, and ultimately he ends up turning back into sand 
Mm. So I was like, hey, that sounds kind of more like a golem, but I, you, you know, I mean, what do I know? You know what I'm saying? I just, uh, I was just trying to figure out what he was. Cause I was like, man, he's, he's definitely, he's not a day walker. He's, mm -hmm. he's not like, like half and half. I mean, he's, he's, he's something completely different. And obviously he's been with, with Dandridge for a long time. Cause the comfortability is there, mm -hmm. you know, and he just seems like in his mannerisms, he seemed lifeless. You know what I mean? Ah. They like said very dead eyes and just, um, just his mannerisms were robotic. So, um, I thought that that was a, that was also a testament of good character acting by, I want to say his name was Jonathan Stark, but, uh, yeah, that, that, that was also really cool. And, um, you know, uh, just to bring everything full circle, the music in this is fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. It is. I, I feel like, you know, we've talked about the Jaws effects a lot in film. This has it. This is something that, you know, depending on what we're watching, on screen, the music is help driving, you know, the emotion, the adrenaline, or the fear mm -hmm. of what's going on. I mean, Jerry Dandridge has the coolest vampire intro. Every time he's on that, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like it's really, it's really cool. And then like when Charlie's investigating that little, like it's like a Curious George song playing in the background. I mean, it's just it was really <laughs> helping just drive this this fast paced, high energy film along. You know what I'm saying? And that also. It's a testament of the times because, you know, in modern day film, mm -hmm. the the usage of music is just it's not the same. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, this is going, it, that goes director to director. You know, some yeah. people use it really well um, or some people don't consider it as being part of, you know, what yeah. can be part of the experience, you know? Yeah. So, um, but, but yeah, man. I mean, I don't know. What, what is your, your final thoughts on this, man, in conclusion? Final <laughs> thoughts is, you know, I feel everybody should see this film at least once, more than once in their mm -hmm. life. Like I said, this is my 1A, 1B uh, favorite vampire film alongside with The Lost Boys. It has a very special place in my heart. Not just vampire film, but overall movie watching experience. Um, it's high entertainment value, relatability, um, and just... You know, any any film that can can break the mold in such a way that this one did is should be highly revered and, and, and highly watched. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like the rewatchability is there um, and it, it just it, it has everything to offer in not just a solid horror film, but a solid film overall. Mm -hmm. Like this, yeah. this one is is bar none. If I, you know, the, 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 the trophy question, oh, if you're on an island with only 20 movies what would it be <laughs> this one would be on that list and it would be top 10 on that list <laughs> i feel like if i'm on an island though like i would probably uh, I, I love that question set up but like i probably have a lot more to worry about than the movies or, or music yeah, or like, yeah. like, was, like i don't know you like the story <laughs> like you you're on an island man you got one album to take with you and i'm like man shit i don't, I don't, even, know, I don't, know, I don't even know how to make i don't even know how i'm gonna get a vcr to work i'm <laughs> trying to eat first of all i'm a big fella <laughs> <laughs> I like the I like the I like the, the number one movie on my list, hey, the one that shows hey. me how to survive in this situation. And I'm trying to keep the rain off my head. Maybe, maybe I'll just keep me cast away. And yeah. <laughs> like, and then I just always think, wait, if I'm on an island, I'm pasty as fuck, dog. What I'm, what I'm gonna do for sunblock? I'm gonna fuck around and have skin cancer by like fucking week day three. <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe the alchemist, so you can figure out how to make some stuff. Yeah, make light of the worst situation ever. Give perspective. Yeah, folks, man. I think that's it, folks. Folks, man, we're probably going to get out of here and catch y'all next time, man. This, this is probably going to come out. It's going to be October, so it's spooky season. Yeah, yeah. So we got some stuff lined up for y'all, man. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Support us with the links below for the merch, man. And uh, we'll be back soon. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's core with all the... What did you give all your information? Yeah, catch me at Monkey Blood on Twitter, Instagram. <laughs> catch us at Classes of Cinematics on Instagram. You know, and I'm Bobby Blockbuster. I don't have no information to give except for you can catch me on the next show. All right, folks, we out of here. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>